for today's cup of coffee with Scream. Oh, tornado warning. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like we're under, at this point, I think three, it's uh, 9.13 p.m. I think we're still on daylight savings time, Eastern Standard, on September 25th, 2024. And we have a, um, yeah, we got tornado it's not right on us it's i've got ryan hall here as we're recording and it's not the it's still it's supposed to expire at 9 30 uh-huh. but it's not near us which is good yeah that is a good thing but we're definitely going to be getting some of those winds if it did if that's what happens. We got a flash flood warning. <sighs> yeah, it's already started <laughs> in the basement. Has it already? Has it already started flooding in the basement? Yeah. Plus the flood. If you've got a flood watch and a flood warning, I mean, I think the warning probably is more hardcore than the watch, isn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And it's one of those that... Oh, this doesn't mention us by name. That's not good. What? What? <laughs> the, the uh, what? As far as the flash flood warning. Oh, that's normal. It does mention us by name. Oh, shit, that's normal. Yes, because we have a river that's. It's not near us, but it, it's about a mile, mile yeah. and a half from us. Yep, yeah, two miles. Two miles. We're we're up on a hill, so we don't have to worry about it. But as far as trees, power outages. If if there's no cup of coffee for a couple of days, you'll know that more than likely we're out of. Power. Oh, shit, We've your never coffee. had it. Your coffee. Well, I have, and it's what I meant to pick up some more freeze dried coffee when we went out, and I forgot. But I think I have some instant coffee in the cupboard. You better not have touched my my stash. I didn't touch it. I can promise you that. Is it still there? It's. I have no idea. I don't touch there. your stuff. As it's far as bound to be there. But anyhow, I don't we, touch your coffee stash. I ain't a coffee person. <laughs> we may get over the next couple of days uh, about uh, somewhere between two to four inches, maybe more. And this is the hurricane has not even made land yet, and that's supposed to be down there in Florida and mm-hmm. the folks in Georgia that it's going to hit inland. So this That's is great. the this is the warm up prior to, and so anytime that you have got possibility of weather anything, isn't please pay attention. Isn't it weird how this is happening right before Rosh Hashanah? Yeah. Yeah. Well, with the geomagnetic storms, and it's one of the things that Stefan Burns talks about. When you have the geomagnetic storms, it causes earth weather to intensify. There's a lot of reasons to pay heed to what that young man says. Right. So, right. Oof. Uh, within that, and we did go out and get supplies and stuff, because why would you not? <laughs> if, if you don't have the supplies and the, and the storm is already there, you're too late. You're too late. Yeah. And and yeah. some of those folks down there in Florida and stuff that have this, have extreme weather all the time, they're just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> they're like, they're, they're riding the tornado. It's like, ah, yeah. we love it here. There, there was a uh, an American tall tale about one of these guys. I can't remember if it was Pecos Bill or somebody that was one of these Western characters in mythology that wrote a tornado. How the heck did he do that? It's a tall tale. Oh. That's the whole thing. Yeah, but what's the tall tale? How did he tell how that he, he how could he did write it? a damn tornado? And this was part of the mythology of like the American cowboy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It was just like you had Paul Bunyan who was a lumberjack, and he had Babe, the big blue ox, and that they were giants. And as far as cutting down the the timber to clear the land for the houses and different things like that, there's a lot of those things that are not being taught in the schools. What's being taught in the schools is totally anti-American. Yeah. 
and it needs to fucking stop. Yeah. It's indoctrination of something else that's completely against what this nation was founded on. It is. And, and as far as common sense, we've got storms of every degree, not just earth weather that is brewing. And I think it's just one of these that this reminds us more how fragile everything is, how fragile life on this planet is. Yeah. Yeah. How, how that in a few minutes, everything that somebody has worked for can be gone. Oh, yeah. That's why I'd say, like, the hobbits were onto something. Well, yes, I do understand that. But that hobbit hole does not work well when it's flooding. It does if you got a hump over it. <laughs> you got an awning on, on your hobbit oh. hole? Yep, it will work real well. And And it's funny because on some of these things that people talk about prepping, and it's like... These are things, there. there's certain, if you want to call it prepping supplies, that everybody should have on hand all the time. Flashlights. You should have a battery-powered radio and or they've got these solar radios now. We've got one that you can hand crank. Yeah. That it has shortwave on it. I, I get think a good has, one because some of those cheap ones, are, they're a pain in the, ba- pain it, in the ass. It also has like a weather alert system on it Mm -hmm. different things like that as far as walkie talkies i think you have actually a handheld ham radio don't you somewhere um well now this is that's on you because i try to get my shit together i do have candles have lighting sources have food that does not need some kind that you can just eat it out of the can or whatever that you don't have to cook in case the electric is off Uh (sighs) all these things And, and and it's like to try to get those things in case because there's more in cases than most people understand most people go along blissfully ignorant, thinking that everything is going to be the same always. Mm-hmm. And that's foolishness. You know, it would be great to live in this fantasy where everything is perfect all the time. That is not life on this planet. No, it's not. Oh. <sighs> this is a ghetto ass hell. Of the world that we live yeah, on. It's, yeah. But to always have, like, if you know that there's a storm coming, go and pick up medications so that you're not going to run out of them. That was something that I had to do today. It was a matter of going and getting the insulin refilled. To ask the pharmacist, hey, if the power goes out, how long can the insulin last without having to be refrigerated? You know? Because you have to think of these things to make sure that you have things like ibuprofen or Advil or whatever that you can take. Just basic med supplies all the time. Mm -hmm. Because you never know when the what if is going, when the shit's going to hit the fan. Yeah. Just, you know, I might as well, I'm being very, very blunt because today has been one of those days I've had to be very, very blunt. So, yeah, a flood, it's not usually horrific, but even Ryan Hall, now he's not one of these fear porn people. He's not. He's from Pikeville, Kentucky, which that's about, what, about three hours from us? Uh, I don't know that it's three. It may be a one and a half. I have no idea. It, I, I've it, been to Pikeville before. Yeah. And it seems like it was... Maybe an hour and a half, because you, you could go up through Russell County and stuff like that and hit hit up through there. And mm-hmm. it, Pikeville's not a small place. No, it's not. It, um, well, I, don't, I, I actually have no idea. I don't. You were there. You just don't remember it. <laughs> you really have been to Pikeville. Uh, when was this? I, it's been several years back. It's like 2014 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't. Somewhere through there. Yeah, that's a... Now it's a blur. I get it. I get it. But um, any of y'all, and please, if you're not in 
the eye of the storm or in the path of the storm, please pray for those who are. I got <laughs> but the way that this cone is going to hit, it's it's going to go straight on up through some of these southern states and stuff. God love those people that are living in the trailers and have nowhere else to go. Yeah. yeah. Please pray for them. Yeah. Because some of those those things are not... I, I don't know that you could get those things pinned down good enough to where they would ever... They're just not made to endure strong storms. That's it. I don't say that. I got a friend who lives in a trailer. It's going to be right in that storm. It's true. I know. And that's where the people that live in the trailers need to go to other places. And I think that they honestly were talking about the waffle shops or something like that. The waffle houses. Yeah, that they are, that there was some kind of storm code. It was a waffle house code. Yeah. Yeah, they're a temporary shelter. Yeah. Go, go to a waffle house. And that if it got bad enough to where they altered their menu, you knew that that was bad. In what way altered their menu? Like put stuff on there that they normally wouldn't? No, to like to where they couldn't prepare a full menu. Oh. If they stormed that they were like lesser items and stuff like that. Right, right. They've got a whole method going on some of that stuff, which I was unaware of. Oh, shit. I think that's pretty awesome. So find, make sure that you know where the, where the nearest Waffle House is. Mm-hmm. Ours is like forty five minutes away. Thirty yeah. forty five minutes away. But we also have a basement. We do have a basement, and our house is relatively mm-hmm. secure. As weird as it's built, it is. It is, and even with the the a little bit of flooding, that's just because we got drainage issues. Mm-hmm. We're working on that. A squeegee could take care of some of that i mean it's not like it gets bad bad anyhow it's just an annoyance and you you know you don't put things you don't store things on the floor down there well what it is we have to seal i'm trying to think what it is it's you know you know wild. that like huh the, it's the basement wall it's but yeah the it's foundation. the brick right at the break uh mm-hmm. basement wall and so, like, right there, where it meets the floor, we mm-hmm. have to seal it because it's coming from under there. Yeah. So well, that brick that is wanting to been. lift up, and so we're going to have to, like, reseal it somehow so it actually goes and flows right back to the drain. Is there actually a... There's not a crack between the foundation and the, the floor, is there? Because houses do settle, and that's, that's where certain things like that, and if, if it needs to have more mortar added... And then you could put a paint sealant on top of that. And you don't have to paint the whole damn wall. You just have to paint up uh, probably, what, two foot, something like that. I'd have to, we'll have to ask Omega about that. Mm-hmm. But they did not, the drain in the basement, and I'm sure y'all are thrilled about this. Some of the guys are like, yeah, she finally talking our stuff. It, most basement floors are not supposed to be level. They are supposed to gently sort of angled where you most of them have a drain in the center or something Mm -hmm. because i apparently i came from a long lineage of idiots they didn't do that (sighs) some people uh, actually no that's not uncommon for people to come from a lineage of idiots yeah okay but to also like not build their basements correctly but this is for people, and, and that's why building codes, for the most part, matter to prevent, to, you know, when you're building a house or doing whatever, to do it right the first time so that those who come after do not inherit the problems. My God, I wish our whole damn nation could get that concept. I truly do. It would be nice. But anyhow, if you've got a center basement drain it's easier and then you can that just slopes down and then you can just squeeze it and it goes out not us <sighs> hey at least i we known people that had to have sump pumps at least we don't have to worry about that yeah no we have to deal with neighbor that has septic issues who's got the, the septic issues well, that's their problem yeah that's what, what i'm yeah, saying yeah that's not uh, it's their problem. Know. We have to deal with their smell. I have never... Well, I don't know what you're talking about on that. Phil has talked about... The Omega. Omega. 
has talked about that multiple times. I, I don't know. I've never... And it's always in that back part. Uh, that's not the neighbors or anything like that. And I think part of it, he doesn't understand that the... We have... where we're, The land has a really weird clay. And it's not a red clay. It's sort of a yellow-looking clay. What does that have to do with the smell? Because if any time you've when got it smells stagnant... Like sewer. Anytime you've got stagnant water, you're going to have a smell like that. So. That's true. Mm hmm. Yes. And this, this comes from knowledge of growing up watching this old house. This old house? I paid attention to Bob, whatever his name, Vila. It wasn't Bob Lazar. I know no. that. I like it, Bob Lazar, but no, it's Bob Vila. I would listen to those things. It fascinated me mm -hmm. to take something that was old and broken down and to be able to restore it Yeah. to, to make it to where it could. And he didn't go in and destroy what these houses looked like. He mm -hmm. just made them functional. He had respect for the original architecture and structure of those homes. Yeah. Not like that stupid person that took out that wonderful staircase and put in some crap. Yeah, and a lot of those um, <sighs> house flipper shows on, like, uh, what was that, HGTV? Mm -hmm. Some of those people hated the renovations that the people did to their houses. Yeah. Hated them. Yeah. But it also came from, as far as the uh, real estate agent that I worked for, because he did, he would also renovate homes and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. he was good at what he did. Yeah. Now, if he'd, if he'd had a little Stratera, I might have still been working for him. Mm. But I, but as you talk about wide open all the time, going 90 miles a minute from like 6 o'clock until whenever. Run you, oh, run you ragged. God. Nobody can go at that pace forever. But if you are... Only people who are cracked out. is That's that crackhead energy. You know, it was. And the thing is, he just has severe ADHD. Yeah. He's got to be going all the time. Yeah. And and childhood. I think there's some childhood issues there also. Yeah. But he's very much, he never does any kind of drugs, anything like that. Mm -mm. He just did not believe in it. He's just one of those people. Um, but if you are in line of storm or anything like that, please be prepared. Please make sure that you've got an emergency weather radio on you in case that you can't get to the U of Tube or something like that. U of Tube. Mm-hmm. Someone actually ne needs to make that a site. It's going to be a competitor to YouTube. I think it's the they But it's going them. to be U, the letter U, of Tube. I think they might as well rename it the They of Them because it's not, uh, you know, for people like us, it's not a place for us anymore. No, it's a place for advertisers. Yeah. Yeah. And people that's making them money and we don't. Mm-hmm. We just, we try and try to mirth. We are the comic relief. Yeah. But please, like I said, pray for people. Check on people after after this passes, because he's right. Rosh Hashanah is on October the 2nd. There's another eclipse then. I this just is, find it very odd. Well, and it's like Rosh Hashanah is the Feast of Trumpets. And it's one of those where it's a matter of crowning christ as king this is how we do it as believers followers of christ there's people that they would scream to high heaven or lowest hell because that they do not want people that are followers of christ doing these things the reason we do these appointed times is because christ did we're doing what he did mm -hmm. but it's also a time to petition god you know, and, and yes. it's called the head of the year. It's actually the seventh month on the Jewish calendar, the current Jewish, Jewish calendar. And like I said, we've got this. There's a comet coming in. There's the possibility that there's a star out there that's going to go like supernova or some shit like that. Like I said, check with Stavon, Stavon Burns. Mm -hmm. He can tell you all these things. But there's storms coming. In a variety of ways. 
And this is why prayer has never been more important. Yeah. Yeah. It has been a scary ass time. Uh Uh-huh. It truly, truly has. And it was fun because there's a, um, in Northern Virginia, the Virginia state line effectively stops at Roanoke. And because it's, it's a different world from Roanoke on up and from Roanoke on down towards where we are. It is, I've, I think we should just make our own state. I'm trying to get, uh, I think his name's Tim Burchett from there in East we Tennessee. Need- He's from Knoxville. I'm like, adopt us. Adopt us. Because he, you know, he did, you know, do pretty good as far as Congress. He at least tries to do something, mm-hmm. as opposed to the people that are doing nothing. But uh, we need Ryan to- Hall was trying. He had mispronounced Appomattox. We need one big island. That would be enough to make about like maybe five. That could happen. Maybe five. Let me tell you something. Towns, five cities. If those mines that is in the tiny town near us ever collapse we could have we lake, would be an island we could have lakefront property legit for real i'm not joking everybody has <laughs> known that everybody who lives here understands the volatility of these things yeah i mean we could be swallowed up at any moment no because where we are, the mines are not. That's true. They could be swallowed up at uh-huh. any moment. That's what I always told you as far as living out there in that town. Hell no. Most people have got enough sense. Yeah. We're five miles out. Yep, yep, yep. And people are going to go, my God, she has gone full-blown Appalachian speak. Yes, I have. What's wrong with that? It's, it's When I get really tired and really stressed, the accent is thicker well why hide it because i like people to uh, you know to try to enunciate to where i can be semi understood it's called exposure therapy you get used (laughs) to it and then you start to understand it it's true it's true and the thing is that there are people that are still in these some of these little haulers in southwestern virginia in the appalachian mountains that their accent is much thicker than mine yeah yeah so final thoughts kid you never know what kind of people you're gonna find in the mountains no but be prepared for the storms any kind of storms all the storms make a damn hole in the hill yeah stay prayed up yeah that's the main thing can you pray and make a hole in the hill? You can do both. Yes, absolutely. I think that you we can, got a hill you right there. You can back. pray no and joke. dig at the same time. Hold up. Legit. That's our our property line all the mm-hmm. way to the top of the mountain. Mm-hmm. I could dig I could dig one. You got to realize, honey, when it rains, that that stuff, that erosion, it, it you got mudslide. You do know that, right? They had That's structure. gravity. They had structures in their in their <laughs> hobbit homes. It was not just oh, I'm, this That's is this is staying up by the grace of God in a prayer and and That's one lit candle in the furthest house. room with your tongue held a different way. Oh, I'd rather not be buried alive. That is not. <laughs> they had structure. Serious. They had support beams. Not. They did. <laughs> Anyhow, if you've had experiences with paranormal, supernatural encounters with UFOs, aliens, cryptids, tinfoil hats, because there are people that are going, oh, they've got the weather machines going whir, whir, whir. Yeah. And that may be. We don't know. But this is what is presented to us. Yeah. And I, the, the emails, I ain't even. I ain't even. I just ain't even. But I will. At some point, I will. Mm-hmm. It's been a rough go. Yeah. <sighs> Bitch shoot rumble YouTube go check her out. X previously known as Twitter. We're Landa C O C W S. Go check her out on there. Thank you all for joining us. Have a good. Know that you are loved. Mm-hmm. Treat other people the way that you would like to be treated. Yeah. And truly pray for everybody because everybody's in the storm right now. Not even in the eye of the storm. They in the storm. Yeah. 
And it's one of those that storm, storm. God is still God all by himself. Mm-hmm. And Lord willing, we'll see you on the next cup. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Bye. Bye.